We must move on to questions uh, to the Minister for Culture, Arts and Leisure. And I call Mr. David Hildridge. Mr. Hildridge. Question one, Mr. David Speaker. Thank you, Gormagut, uh, Last Count Collier, and thank the member for his question. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the tremendous success of all our athletes in the 2014 Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. Overall, we finished 15 out of 71 on the medals table, with over 6,500 competing athletes to win 12 medals at the Games. I'm sure the member will agree this is a remarkable achievement. Um, I hosted a reception here yesterday evening to celebrate the team's remarkable achievements. In addition to this, I also met with the Chief Executive of Sport NI last week to discuss the plans to build on that success. I can advise that Sport and I will be carrying out debriefs with the governing bodies of each of the sports that had athletes competing in Glasgow. A review will also be taken using information collected as part of each of these debriefs, and the review is intended both as an appraisal of performance, but also as a mechanism to make recommendations to appropriate partners on what necessary changes are needed to help all our sports improve their performance, and it is anticipated that this process and initial review will be completed by December of this year. Mr Hildridge for supplementary. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for answering and welcome the reviews that have been mentioned. Uh, we have seen uh, some improvements in recent times in the boxing facilities in that type of estate. Uh, can the Minister give any indication on any progress in any other capital schemes, perhaps including the velodrome or any other facilities? Um, I thank the member for his uh, supplementary question as well. Um, I mean, it will come as no surprise the member is well aware of this, but boxing continues to achieve success despite the facilities, not because of the facilities. And yes, there has been some investment that has slowly started to come into effect, but you could argue that that performance in terms of boxing well preceded the, the capital investment. I know Sport and I will agree that at the end of this month our board meeting on what way the capital programme will come forward. Uh, there is a long list of what is needed in terms of sports capital investment, including, as a member will not be surprised, a velodrome. But certainly I think we do need to build facilities in order to help performance, and we need to build facilities in order to build aspiration and to build self-confidence in those athletes who have yet to present themselves to their, 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 the, the sport of their choice. Call Mr. Could I ask the Minister what steps she is taking uh, to improve the spread of medals over the different uh, participating sports? I thank the member for his question. As I said to um, Mr Hildage, uh, that Sport and I is planned to do a debriefs with each of the, the sports, and this includes ju not just the athletes uh, who competed in Glasgow 2014, but also uh, with their governing bodies. Once, that's ha once that happens, a review will be undertaken using th that information, which will act um, both as an appraisal of their performance, but also to look at recommendations, particularly in relation to what other support is needed. I think it really is uh, common upon us all to use the experience, the most recent that we have is in August, to try and build on it and certainly direct it in the future. Now, I mean, that's due to be completed by December of this year, and in between then I'll be talking to the Chief Executive of Sport NI, and indeed we'll have a, a, further, a further meeting with this, the, the forum in relation to the Sports Matters strategy. Well, I'm no doubt this will, be, this will come up as well. Call Mr Michael Mijimsi. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, can I thank the Minister for her answers? Can the Minister assure us uh, that, bearing in mind the great success that we've had at Glasgow, not least within boxing, that uh, all clubs within boxing uh, will be uh, able to access any grants that are available, will be able to uh, access facilities and participate freely uh, in those facilities, and will not be subject, as has been in the past with Sandy Road Boxing Club, uh, uh, proven to have been subject to sectarian harassment. Can she assure us that any grants going forward and any support to the sport will be tied to such assurances? Well, first of all, I refute any allegation that the inference in his, his question is that either my department, Sport and I, have been responsible for sectarian harassment at the Sandy Road Boxing Club. That is not the case. That is not to say that they haven't experienced it before, 
in St Kevin's Hall, well documented, the members consistently raised it. But I need to put that in the record because I don't think it's fair that given sometimes the way in which these programmes are edited, that either myself, Sport and I or anybody else has been involved in sectarian harassment of Sandy Row. Sandy Row Boxing Club, as well as all other boxing clubs who want to avail of this capital investment, know what they need to do. And what they need to do is become affiliated to a governing body in order to receive funding. That is the criteria. I'm not changing it to suit Sandy Row Boxing Club or anyone else for that matter. Thomas Karen McKevitt. Deputy Speaker, and could I apologise to the Minister for not attending uh, the Commonwealth Games reception last night, but it did clash with me um, meeting the Down Camogie team who won the, um, the uh, All-Ireland uh, Premier Junior title um, on Sunday. But uh, having said that, uh, could I ask the Minister uh, what support financially uh, or otherwise is available to our young athletes who wish to compete in the 2015 Commonwealth Youth Games in Samoa? Um, I'd like to, uh, on behalf of myself, certainly pay tribute to the Down Camogie. I think their success has been amazing. Um, in terms of the Youth Games um, in Samoa, and indeed St Lucia has also been mentioned as well, um, I mean, the Commonwealth Games Council have received funding. They are working with Sport NI, and certainly you know, I'd be hoping to do a meeting, if, a meeting organised, although I can't remember the date, but certainly soon with the Chief Executive of Commonwealth Games Council to discuss this. And it is incumbent upon us that we do give support, not just the athletes competing in that for, but other for us, because we need to ensure that their performance is going to be consistent. They need to have the confidence and they need to have the contentment knowing that they're not having to worry about funding. Their efforts need to be focused on their performance. So I'm, I'm meeting uh, the Commonwealth Games Council uh, Chief Executive fairly soon, and also we're meeting Sport and I as well. Members, I should have said that question 2 and question 10 have been withdrawn. I call Mr Sidney Anderson. Mr Anderson. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Question 3. I thank the member for his question. I recognise the significant contribution that the voluntary and community arts sectors make to many aspects of, of life here within this, and pipe bands can introduce people to the appreciation of music and start some on the road to musical excellence. This year, the Field Marshal Montgomery Pipe Band won its 10th and 4th consecutive world title, which is a truly great accolade to the band and the pipe band sector. In recognition of the importance of music making in communities, my department through the Arts Council provides support for bands by contributing to the cost of the purchase of instruments. In addition, the Ulster Scots Agency makes funding available to bands through its financial assistance scheme, which can provide funding for musical tuition. Call Mr Anderson for supplementary. Thank you. Uh Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for that response. Uh, Minister, you have already congratulated the Field Marshal Montgomery Pipe Band for its success at the, the World Championships in Glasgow, and I would record my, my congratulations as well. And will she also now join with me in congratulating uh, Blair and District Pipe Band from my Upper Band constituency, which recently won the Grade Two Championships uh, at Port Rush. Um, but I am sure the Minister will agree with me that pipe bands are expensive to keep and to develop. And for, that, uh, for these bonds to build on that success, there are a lot of young people uh, in these bonds now, and I have been involved with some of them. And, and to build on that success, it is vital that they get proper funding. And there are a lot of family members in the bonds as well, and it costs a lot of money. Can but I can I, the yes, can I ask the, the Minister, will she give an undertaking to give further support and funding for these pipe bonds? Yeah. That was a very long yeah. tune. Very long tune with a short answer. Yes, I absolutely do congratulate. The members own, um, or the, the, the band of the members' own constituency. Uh, all politics is local, um, and certainly I'm keen to make sure that the support for pipe bands and other uh, bands involved in the purchasing and development of musical instruments continues. Um, certainly, I, I think, I mean, the Field March Montgomery Pipe Band is probably the exception, but there are many others who have participated in competitions, competitions and have won, and those who maybe have not won but certainly are getting there, and they need to be supported. And both the Arts Council and the Ulster Scots Agency have continued to do that to their best efforts. Call Ms. Rosalie McCarley. My other last concordia, August Gumbias Lisha Naira, Asa Fragri, Kuchisha. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answers up to this point. And can I ask the Minister, between the Arts Council and the Ulster Scots Agency, um, can she give any figures on how much has been invested in the musical instrument for band scheme? And are there any plans to review these, Gormayogut? 
uh, thank the member for her supplementary questions. Um, and since 2011, the Ulster Scots Agency has uh, invested over £852,000, uh, and the Arts Council since 2011 has invested over £605,000. Um, I, I know both agencies um, are, like everything else, are planned to look at uh, value for money in every aspect of the work that they do, and I've absolutely no doubt that this as well as other aspects of the work and the services they provide will be under review, particularly given the budgetary constraints that we're all facing. I call Mr William Humphrey. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Question number four. <clears throat> Neither my department nor the Arts Council has provided funding for the Ardown FLA for this August, although I do not preclude funding being made available to the FLA in the, in the foreseeable future. Thank the Minister for her answer, brief though it was. Given the appallingly sectarian, racist and hateful remarks by the Druid singer at the Ardoin Fla, can I ask the Minister, does she agree with me that these bigoted remarks have caused damage to community relations in North Belfast and have caused great offence to the Unionist, Protestant and Orange community? And can I ask the Minister what sanctions she puts, plans to put in place to, uh, in terms of the funding for the Fla for next year? <coughs> Um, well, I, I thank the member for his question, and indeed I do condemn any sectarian remarks or any remarks that aren't befitting any community. Um, I welcome the member's sentiments. I look forward to his support that when bonds who are funded through the Arts Council or the Ulster Scots Agency, or the Ulster Scots Agency who parade in certain parts of our constituency, who, prefer, or, or who play offensive tunes outside places of worship, that they too, that the member will join with me and that their funding and the investment into those bonds should be looked at as well and scrutinised. And indeed the organisations who march with them and who have responsibility for them will too, also too, be penalised and scrutinised. And I have answered the question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, could I encourage members please not to be making remarks across the floor? You may not be all that pleased with me as the chairman, but I'll do my best. So all remarks through the chair. I call Mr. Fran McCann. I'll ask Han Corlia, and uh, I would ask a minister uh, she will monitor, monitor funding made for festivals, commemorations and bonds, and if any display of sectarianism, racism, etc. is proven, will she take steps to ensure that all funding is reviewed? Well, I thank the member for that uh, question, and indeed, you know, I'm sure the member heard the answer I give to Mr. William Humphreys. I will indeed. I, I mean, I want to take this opportunity to say again that I too was very, very disappointed uh, and saddened by the remarks that the Druids, Druids made at the Ardoin Fla. I was very content at the rebuttal that the statement came from the organisers, indeed, from all politicians across this house. Um, but I do think that we all need to be very careful and we need to be very cautious in the way in which sometimes question time is used for political point scoring. Sectarianism, regardless of where it occurs, needs to be condemned, and we should do that regardless of where it happens. But certainly I will, uh, given that there is cross-party support to ensure that sectarian, sectarianism is ended and to ensure that people who are taking parts, part in bans or festivals or activities who are involved in what could be perceived as sectarian behaviour, that any support for them needs to be scrutinised and any action needs to be taken after a careful review has been considered. Call Mr Alban McGuinness. Uh, th thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her replies. Um, the, the Minister has quite rightly condemned the sectarian behaviour of the Druids ban, uh, and uh, other members of the House have done so as well. Would the Minister agree with me that the organising committee acted in a forthright manner in also condemning those remarks? And would the Minister further uh, allow, allow an application by uh, the, uh, the FLA organisers in order to extend cross-community outreach? Um. I thank the member for his supplementary question. I um, totally agree that the work on which the Ardoin FLA have done this year and previous years has to be commended. It is regrettable that the Druids became the story of the FLA rather than all the activities in the week leading up to it. They do do 
cross community work, they are trying their best, along with their partners in the Shankill and elsewhere. Ardown Fla and other cultural programmers and cultural partners are coming together to look at ways in which they can make applications next year, and I welcome that, regardless of where and who it comes from. Call Mr. Tom Elliott for a question. Uh, question number five, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I thank the member for his question. <clears throat> The members should be aware that I have been advised that the recent fish kill at Bantry was a natural occurrence which was not possible to predict or prevent and was brought about by a sustained period of hot and still weather. These conditions raised the water temperature and lowered the oxygen levels in the water resulting in the fish mortality. Inland fishery staff visit all public angle in the state waters on a regular basis in relation to operational needs and also respond to the reports from other agencies such as the Environment Agency and indeed members of the public. If angling is affected on any of the waters, anglers are informed through the NI Direct Angling website. In view of the ongoing fish mortality and, and reports of possible toxic algae bloom, the lock was closed for angling as there was a precautionary measure and a notice was posted on the website. The Department also provided statements in response to a number of media inquiries. In addition to this, DECAL, the Department erected a public notice at Brantry, which advised of the possibility of toxic, toxic blue-green algae blooms during prolonged periods of sunshine and the risks that this perhaps could present. Call Mr. Elliott for supplementary. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for that uh, comprehensive reply. Uh, just to, to ask the question, she did say it was due, or the fish kill was due to hot and still water for a long, prolonged period, and I don't think the temperatures were as hot this summer as they were last summer. I'm just wondering, was there a similar fish kill last summer, because the, the temperatures were e even hotter last year? Well, I, I'm going to have to take the member's word for it, because um, uh, in relation to the levels, the temperature last year in comparison to this year, I don't know. But the fact that I can't remember, and there doesn't seem to be any reported fish kills last year, it would suggest that between the fish kills and po the possibility of the algae, the toxic algae in the Brantry, added to uh, a high level of fish mortality. But what I will do is I will try and bring the members' questions to my officials and get answers. And I'm sure, I'm sure the member will will join with me in saying that anything we can do to reduce or decrease the impacts of angling on our public waters, we need to all take. So any information at all, or any uh, information even that the, con the, the member may have from anglers in his own constituency in relation to this river, I, I'd be happy to receive that. Call Mr Dominic Bradley for a question. The proposed cuts are not unique to the Arts Council. Rather, all business areas across my department and its arm's length bodies have been asked to closely examine their budgets to meet the reductions. I have met with the Chair of the Arts Council to discuss the potential impact of reductions and to examine how best to implement them with a view to minimising the effect on frontline services. However, it is not just the end user's enjoyment of the artistic product that may be affected if programming is scaled back. Organise, organisations may have no choice other than to make savings from other strands of work, notably perhaps their outreach programmes, community ticketing, schemes and staff overhead costs, as has been suggested by them. In addition, marketing budgets may have to be reduced, leading directly to reduced income from consequential reductions in the ticket sales. The Arts Council Board met on the 10th of September to consider its options, and organisations are currently being advised of decisions in terms of budget reductions. I am conscious of the potential impact these budget reductions will have on programmes, staffs and services, and I will continue to work with the sector during this difficult period and as a final, and particularly as a final position emerges. Call Mr Bradley for supplementary. A Jonu da Claraca Culturha, Lelin Monotora, then Vehev, and Rachi could you be the Shin da Hunskin of Nicolia Aliena? Could I ask the, the Minister if any of the one million pounds um, allocated to cultural programmes in the June monitoring? Uh, 
Will any of that be used to fund Arts Council programmes? I thank the member for supplementary question. This additional money isn't to plug gaps in the Arts Council budget. This is additional money in relation to legacy commitments that we made as part of the World Peace and Fire Games and indeed the legacy programme, the ongoing legacy programme and commitment that we have to the City of Culture. And as a member will be aware, there was a, I made a statement last November in the City about commitments, but it isn't just for the City of Derry, it's for the, the neighbouring communities and villages as well. So it is regrettable, uh, while an additional million pounds has to be welcomed, it is regrettable that some groups who have been recipients of arts funding for many years feel it appropriate to criticise groups who have never received funding through this additional one million pounds. Call Mr Raymond McCartney. I'll ask one caller, uh, question number seven, Quest never a shackle to help. Building on an additional funding I secured earlier this year, I submitted a significant bid to the June Monitoring Round to maximise ongoing development of a social and economic legacy for the City of Culture 2013. I was disappointed that funding was not allocated to this bid fully, and I remain committed to harnessing the momentum created by the City of Culture and also to realising the full potential of culture, arts and leisure base to transform the lives of people. Achieving this is not solely dependent on the allocation of a new and additional funds. The DECAP family of organisations and programmes and facilities and services are already actively targeting and delivering interventions across the North West. This week, for example, Culture Tech Festival, supported by my department through NI Screen, will enhance the national and international profile of the North West as a centre for innovation, digital technologies and creative industries. Inspirational programme as part of the festival will also engage in over 16,000 school children. Call Mr. McCartney for supplementary. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. And can I thank the Minister for answering? Indeed, can I both welcome her continuing commitment and delivery for Derry in relation to these particular projects? Uh, can I ask the Minister just in terms of the could you give me a, an outline of the current status of the de development of sports facilities in the North West and, and would she in particular welcome the fact that planning permission has now been sought for the new development of the Brandyville Stadium? Thank the member for his supplementary. Um, and I'm, <coughs> God bless you. I also know that Sport and I have confirmed a phase one of the North Coast Sports um, Village uh, was completed by August. In relation to capital investment uh, as part of the City Culture Legacy Box and Dairy uh, projects, have received £120,000 so far in terms of equipment. In relation to the Daisy Field Showground, I welcome the fact that uh, Dairy City Council have awarded plan permission for the Brandywell. And in relation to the Daisy Fields and Showgrounds project, the department will receive a business case. Um, from the City Council for the element of the Foil Valley, Foil Valley Gateway Master Plan and has been working very closely with Derry City Council in relation to this. And on the basis of receiving that final business case at the Fountain will be awarded on that. Uh, and I imagine that that will be a seamless process. Um, DECAL is still committed to providing 2.5 million sought by Limavady Borough Council towards the development of a sports and community complex in the Dungiven area and provision of this funding will also be subject to a business case as a member will no doubt expect. Well, Mr. Colum Eastwood. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for her answer so far and for her uh, stated commitment to the legacy of, of the City of Culture. Can I just ask her for some clarification though? Because uh, on Radio Foil, one day she talked about the £1 million pounds being there, the, the cultural programme being there for the legacy of the City of mm -hmm. Culture. Uh, and again, she's made a, a commitment today. But can I just ask uh, for clarification? Will all of that £1 million, pounds, uh, is, a, is all of that intended to go to Derry and to the City of Culture's legacy? Well, I'd be happy to write to the member, cons uh, certainly, and give the member a full breakdown of uh, what will be funded where it will be funded, where the projects will happen, and how, what the duration of funding is, and certainly a status report of what I intend to bid for in the next monitor announce, because I think it's important that given that everybody is committed to ensuring that the legacy for the city of culture is met, but also to make sure people have their facts right, because there has been some, uh, I'm not saying mischief, but certainly some confusion that has been spun uh, 
either by certain media outlets or, or people who are on the media who are either really confused, deliberately confusing, or really aren't in full possession of facts, so I'm happy to furnish that to the member. Call Mr Ross Hussey. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Would the Minister agree with me that London Derry's position as the UK uh, City of Culture was enhanced by the participation of those pipe bands and flute bands from the Protestant Unionist community who participated and supported the events? Absolutely, and I'm sure the member has been to the Wall City tattoo, and if he hasn't, why not? He has. I'm glad to hear it. I think the story of the city of culture, particularly in terms of the bands, is something that we can learn right across this north, and indeed the north right across the island. I think the work of the bands uh, and the work of uh, uh, Calder Lani Cahan has been remarkable. And I think it's important that every aspect of music and cultural and heritage is celebrated and celebrated within the context of respect. Um, and it's really, really important that we can we continue that tradition and that heritage, so not just for people who enjoy what we have now, but we make sure and pass that on to generations behind us. Call Mr Jimmy Spratt for a question. Thank you, Deputy Chair. Question 8. Um, with the Deputy Speaker's permission, I'll group questions 8 and 11 together, and I thank the member for his question. Uh, in relation to Ravenhill, the project is progressing very well, with all three stands now complete, and the official opening of the stadium took place, as the member will know, in May this year, and completion of the remaining phases of construction work around education her heritage facilities is planned for early 2015, I expect around February March time. Uh, in relation to IFA, construction at Windsor has commenced on site again in May after the Irish Cup final, and provided that significant delays or any legal issues are avoided. Um, then the, the project can commence and remain on programme with completion of construction works planned for October 2015. The member will also be aware that there is a, currently a judicial review being heard regarding Kaysen Park, so it's not very, it's inappropriate at all that, uh, that I mention that, but certainly in terms of benefits and integration with local communities. As part of the development plans for all the state, the governing bodies have been extensively engaged in consultation with local communities, and it is my intention that stadiums and the potential will be used every day post-construction. Call Mr. Spant for supplementary. Thank you, Deputy Chair, uh, and can I thank the Minister for her answer. In relation to the uh, uh, ongoing uh, talks with community associations, both at Windsor and Ravenhill, could the Minister update us on how far that has gone? And could I compliment the Department on the progress that has been made with community associations? Well, I thank the member um, for his sentiments and happy to pass that on to officials in the Department. It has always been my intention, and it has always been the, the intention as part of this development, that the opportunities for communities do not end with construction. They have to be pre construction, during construction, and post construction. It is important that those communities who are neighbours to these stadia aren't outside looking in, so they need to be involved. I'm content that the discussions that have been had so far are good. Can we do more? Absolutely. And I think it's important that <clears throat> indeed members like yourself have continually came forward with suggestions about how we do that better. The ongoing relationship needs to continue with officials, regardless you know, who's in the department or not, because this is going to be a 25 year relationship. And all being well, and you know, God's bars is all will all be here, but certainly not in this place. But that, 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 that the benefits of those communities will endure well beyond the construction and hopefully the construction completion for next year and the year after that. Call Mr. Pat Sheehan. I'm going to ask you 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 to on the socio-economic proposals and benefits that would best suit the needs of those communities? I thank the member for his question. Certainly, I think the member is probably referring to social clauses and community benefits, other than what uh, Jimmy Spratt has outlined. There has been discussions, particularly in relation to the governing bodies and community groups. I intend, once I get the issue resolved around Casement Park, uh, to take on uh, a different, that should take on a different complexion in terms we need to have more engagement with other departments and indeed partners and partnerships around actually apprenticeships, monitoring those apprenticeships, making sure that 
whatever commitment is made that it's honoured, making sure that there's training places, liaisons and discussions with the schools need to be ongoing and indeed with the construction industry and indeed the community voluntary and um, the regeneration groups that exist within the South Belfast, particularly in relation to Windsor Park and West Belfast for Case and Park, because it's really important that people don't feel that these opportunities, while based on the road, that they can't avail of them. And the worst thing that could happen is that opportunities b became available when it's too late. We want to ensure that it happens, and it happens sooner rather than later. And as I say, once we get the, the, the decision regarding Case and Park, then certainly I'll have a I'll have a different story to report in terms of what West Belfast can benefit. Order. That ends the period for listed questions. We will now move on to 15 minutes of topical questions. And I call Mr. Michael McJimsey. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, could I ask, uh, as I understand it, uh, business plans and budgets uh, for 2013-14 and 2014-15 for the North-South language bodies have still not been laid before the House. Could the Minister enlighten us, please? Father Minister. Uh, your understanding is right. I haven't laid them, I haven't approved them uh, to come before the House because it's asking for an additional 4% cut on top of what was already agreed. 4% cut on top of what was already agreed will have a huge and dire impact on Ulster Scots Agency. And I think it's incumbent upon myself and my colleagues in DAG to try and sort this out. Because what you're looking at is um, having massive, comp or massive impacts, particularly in Ulster Scots. Mr. McJimsey, for supplement. Can I thank uh, uh, the Minister for that answer? I have to say I'm surprised to hear the reason uh, that is to prevent additional cuts, since there already has been cuts. Uh, my concern, of course, is about how we manage this and who the accounting officer, uh, how the accounting officer uh, accounts for this how these bodies are continuing to operate, to work their finances, how those are being evaluated, and who is going to be held responsible uh, for any potential overspends or underspends? Well, the member is right to be surprised. It was a surprise to me that there was a decision made by my colleagues in, in Dublin to add an additional um, what they call efficiency savings on the language bodies, which actually would have a huge impact on Ulster Scots Agency. And they made a decision to split the money between waterways and languages and give an uplift to waterways and took the, left the, the languages to take a brunt. And I'm far from happy with that, particularly given what I've just said in the first answer. It'll have a huge impact on the Ulster Scots Agency. The member will be aware that the payments that have been made are regular. They're still legal. Uh, and I'm working on the basis that the draft business plans are going ahead and it's business as usual. Mr. Cathal Washington for a topical question. Uh, I've got the last kind of query. Um, can I ask the Minister, uh, can she ensure that her department will continue working with the councillors and officers of Lava Valley Borough Council uh, to ensure the adequate delivery of uh, proper sporting facilities in the Dungiven area? Uh, in short, yes, um, I have. As the member may have been in the chamber uh, when I answered the question to his colleague Raymond McCartney in relation to the legacy plans for Derry City in the North West. So, uh, and to that end, I have a meeting organised with officials from Lima Valley Borough Council to see how we can progress the provision of sports facilities in that area. Mr Sean Rogers for a topical, que topical question. Uh, my apologies, supplementary. Uh, can I ask the Minister for her response and indeed for a comment on the position uh, in terms of the sporting facilities and given that's adopted by the new Causeway Coast and Glens uh, Council recently? Well, I just regret that um, Causeway Coast and Glens adopted the position that they have. I imagine that position uh, sh should be sorted out and will be sorted out with local representatives in the new council configuration and indeed with officials that are there. I was very clear when I made my investment to uh, Coleraine and Borough Council that it was part of a North West legacy plan um, and maybe the officials there didn't fully understand or maybe even the elected reps didn't fully understand the implications and the import of that. So I would urge that all local representatives, along with officials from both council areas, come together to try and get this matter resolved. Because what is needed is uh, proper sporting facilities are required in the Dungiven area. Call Mr. Sean Rogers for topical question. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and thanks for the minister for her answers thus far. Minister, could I ask you what plans your department has for a legacy of golf in Newcastle in the aftermath of the up-and-coming Irish Open? 
Um, I haven't received any um, invitations or delegations in relation to golf or anything in relation to golf in, in the South Down area, vis a vis the Newcastle area. Certainly, Sport and I are working with the governing body for golf, but certainly in particular to that area, um, I haven't, have no knowledge or uh, uh, haven't received any delegations around uh, additional or new investment. Rogers for supplement. Thank you. Um, there are many uh, groups and organisations in the South Down area who would hope to run fringe, particularly cultural events in surrounding towns at the, at the time their eyes open is on. What particular support would your department give those groups? Well, given that this is the first time it's been brought to my attention, what we need to find out exactly what has been run and what Sport and I can assist, if at all, in conjunction with the local government to help. Um, particularly around sporting events and participation to help those be achieved. So I'm, I'm happy to hear representation from the member on how we can do that. Call Mr Ross Hussey for topical question. The Minister would be well aware of the strong bond between rural communities, for example, in County Donegal and County Londonderry. And the recent attack on Newton Cunningham Orange Hall has caused great disquiet. Would the Minister agree with me that this attack was sectarian and blatantly sectarian and that uh, it should be condemned by all right-thinking people? Uh, yes and yes. And I think it's totally regrettable that the hall was attacked in the way it was. I actually seen a clip, didn't see the whole footage, but I seen a clip of some of the, the stewards of the hall and people who have attended it for generations who could see how visibly upset they were. Uh, and I have to condemn it outright. And, Hope that the community can come together and, and help the Orange Men rebuild their hall. Mr. Hussey, for a supplementary. Thank you, Minister, for your response. It was very clear uh, from the reaction of the people there, and one of the, the uh, artefacts that the cameras focused on was a First World War memorial, very appropriately, as we're now into the centenary of the First World War. Will you uh, be speaking at any time to your counterpart in the Irish Republic to see if anything can be done to support this small community and this isolated community in Donegal? Well, just to give the member assurance, what I'll do, particularly given the intervention he's made through topical questions today, I'm happy on the basis of that, but even on the basis that it is the right thing to do, to write uh, to my colleagues in DAG and even and indeed to any other colleagues who have any influence or even any potential investment. Uh, to see if some support can be given to the, to the area, but certainly happy to do that and happy to copy you the member into any correspondence. Mr. Datty Mackay is not in his place. I call Mr. Sidney Anderson. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Following the success of uh, our Team Northern Ireland athletes uh, at the Commonwealth Games, which Minister you have already mentioned today, can I ask you why you, did not, uh, why you used the term North of Ireland? on the invitation sent to all Team Northern Ireland athletes for last night's Commonwealth Games reception here at Stone. Um, I did not see the invitation um, that was sent out. And, um, if you stopped yourself or any member stopped themselves from coming from what is on a, an invitation, I think you need to grow up. There's lots of things, there are lots of things that I encounter through da my daily walk of life that do not reflect, do not reflect the community that I come from. But in order to support athletes or to support people, you just move on and do your best. So if you are preventing yourself from giving support to children and young people because something that said an invitation from me, then I think you need to ask yourself questions. Mr Anderson for supplement. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Well, Minister, you signed the invitation, and if anything, I would say that it's you that's being pathetically petty and politically immature by mixing your politics and Republican dogma with sport. And I think it's deplorable that invitations are Minister, sent out. And the proper, the proper, what I, what I am asking is why was this letter sent out to all individuals and all who took part for this reception with that term on the letter? Well. The member made a decision not to go to the reception last night, so he made a decision to exclude himself from celebrating the achievements of the, the young people and the athletes who were involved in the Glasgow Commonwealth Games of 2014. I did not exclude him, he excluded himself. I call Mr Chris Hazard for a question. 
Last Concordia, can I ask the Minister if she can confirm if her department or herself had any discussions about investment in the Ballyhornan area? Mm -hmm. Um, not in recent times. I was, as the member will be aware, in the constituency some months ago and looked at uh, motorsport in that uh, facility. I'm also aware that through himself and other colleagues, and certainly during the, from his council colleagues, that there has been calls to have uh, a part of, to be part of a master plan for that area, given the fact that it hasn't seen the investment that it needs, particularly around sport and activities. Uh, happy to meet with a member to see how we can take that forward. Call Mr. Hazard for supplementary. I can call you and I thank the, uh, the Minister for reply. And can I take it from her response then, um, that she is willing to meet in the weeks ahead to discuss the needs of the master plan, and indeed what advantages may this bring to the area? I'm, I'm happy to do that, and I'm happy to go back and try and get that organised. And I'm, I'm, I'm delighted the fact that, particularly in an area that hasn't seen the investment, that it is a master plan where departments and bodies and strategy agencies are coming together to try and pull their investment and make sure there's a better outcome for people in that constituency. Call Mr. Alwyn McGuinness for a question. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, could I ask the uh, minister? Uh, about the Belfast Central Library. Belfast Central Library is celebrating 125 years uh, this year. And uh, I'm wondering whether the minister has received the business case for the renewal of the library, the, refurbish uh, the refurbishment of the library, as part of the Library Square development and the development of the Cathedral Quarter. I thank the member for his question and his continued interest in the Belfast Central Library. I haven't received the business case yet. I'm waiting on the business case arriving at my desk. It will be for substantial public money, you know, in the region of anything from 30 to 35 million pounds. But certainly, we need to have the business case to actually start the process of getting the library upgraded, regraded, rebuilt, and redeveloped. Call Mr. Gordon Dunn for a question. Apologies again. A supplementary. Uh, Deputy Speaker, just, just in relation to the business case, once it is received, um, can the Minister give the House the time frame uh, or an indicative time frame in relation to giving the Library the green light, as it were? Well, um, what I'll do following the member's question and indeed a supplementary question is go back and find out exactly what position, when do I anticipate the business case being brought to my attention and what the process and procedure is thereafter. Um, obviously the members are aware of the constraints around funds, but this is one of these projects that will add to the overall tourist uh, attraction of Belfast City, but also that a city like Belfast and size of Belfast needs to have a library. Um, particularly within the heart of it, and particularly within the heart of quarters and areas that are also seeing massive regeneration. It, that can't happen without the central library being involved. I now call Mr Gordon Dunn. Thanks, Mr Deputy Speaker. Can the Minister give us an update on the sub-regional stadium funding, which will be available, I understand, for football clubs within Northern Ireland? Well, the sub-regional funding for uh, soccer won't be made available until um, early next year, uh, and, and indeed um, it wasn't supposed to be made available until the next CSR, but what I've done is I've actually started that process in conjunction with the IFA to try and get a facility strategy brought forward, and on the basis of that, get the outline business case done and get all the bureaucratic uh, stuff out of the way to ensure that when the next uh, CSR, when it's agreed between 15, 16 and not thereafter, that we can start this uh, as soon as possible. Mr Dunn for supplementary. Thanks. Thank the Minister for her answers. Can the Minister indicate approximately what sort of amount of funding will be available and when would you see that clubs would be, should be in a position to make bids for such? The member should be aware that it's, uh, a, pl a political agreement was made around the three stadia, so that the 30 plus million get into Windsor, the remainder of that, which is 30 plus million, should be going into the sub regional, and that is the position that hasn't changed. Order time is up.